tells me that him and Ahmed had this idea that Ahmed should die in a car accident and that there could be a series of videos from that and then eventually Ahmed would come back to life and be back in the videos. So when he was telling me this, he started looking at me and then he said, hmm, actually Alexia, I think it would be a lot better if you're the one who dies. You heard it here, folks. JayStation has officially been exposed for the most vile YouTube prank of the century. Actually, the most vile prank ever. You see that girl there? That's Jay's now ex-girlfriend, Alexia. You'll remember in my last video, I said that I really won't make another video about JayStation. So this one is going to be focused on her side of the story. Jay did release his own response, you know, before she released this video, in which he seems to claim that he is hiding from the police for some reason. So I think that it's safe to say that he has not learned anything from this entire drama. Though I am looking forward to seeing Jay team up to use a Ouija board with his cellmate to find a way to contact his dead career. Anyway, at the end of the last video on this drama, I mentioned that either Alexia had broken up with him or she was playing along and would come back to life at a later date in canon. Probably just a way for Jay to cement into his child fan's mind that he is some sort of god. And it turns out I was kind of right on both accounts, just a little bit off on the details. The original plan, which Jay had cooked up with his roommate, was that the roommate would be the one who would die, and that was eventually shifted onto Alexia, and that she would eventually come back from death in canon, like I guess Jay would bring her back from the dead. And there ended up being seriously more to her side of the story, and we got to hear it all straight from Alexia herself. In the video, Alexia is alive, truth about I'm Jay Station, which is like, seriously good clickbait. If she did learn at least one thing from Jay, it's how to clickbait correctly. Now again, this is all from her side, and I, I always want to vouch for listening to both sides of the story, but since it seems that Jay isn't taking this seriously, her side is all we'll really get, or at least all that I'll ever trust. Hey guys, Future Matteo here, interrupting for a moment to ask you to subscribe. About half of my viewers per video aren't subscribed, and it really is a big thing to small YouTubers like me to see that people are actually enjoying the content. So thanks so much for subscribing and liking the video, and if you're already subscribed, thanks a million. Now let's get back to that video. She starts off by talking about how her and Jay's relationship began. She said that she thought Jay was weird when they first met, but eventually, after talking to him for a while, she realized that she really liked him. Which, you know, start of a love story. She then said that after just two weeks of dating, Jay asked her to move in with him. Which is moving a little fast in my humble opinion. She then mentions something that comes in very important later in the story, that her dad is sick. And she's kind of, you know, hesitant to move in with Jay because she doesn't want to move so far away to live with Jay while her dad is sick. She doesn't actually say what he's sick with. I assume that there's some deep lore. Honestly, I didn't want to dig into it. It was so much fun at first. We had so much fun together. I felt really happy to be with Jay. I was posting pictures of him on my social media. I was head over heels for this guy. So apparently their relationship started off really strong. They got along and presumably summoned Elmo at 3am using a special mirror they bought at the dark web as a date. Their relationship ended with him making three videos saying that she had died and milking her for views and money. So I think we can all tell that something was about to change. I've seen things like this before, especially with YouTubers. It's often said that, you know, most YouTubers are sociopaths. Now, I'm not going to say that Jay is one, but I don't think that any sane person could film the same three videos over and over again on their channel. I mean, working on the same videos day in and day out, that must drive you insane. And I'm talking 3am phone calls, Ouija board challenges, and dark web boxes. None of that stuff is, you know, super exciting, you know? It's the same stuff over and over again. You're just going to Party City and buying some stuff to put in the dark web mystery box every time. I mean, sure, there's a couple differences in every video, but at the end of the day, they all boil down to the same formula. I've seen and heard of YouTubers who act the part, you know, they're super nice to their their fans are super nice on camera they pretend they're having a great time on camera but when the cameras turn off and the fans aren't watching and it's not actually you know gonna hurt their career they're super mean and crazy egotistical now again i'm not talking about jay specifically but alexia did say that once she had moved in and they'd been getting along he began to change and became more and more controlling one night i was sleeping jay decided to take my phone and look through every single message I had on my text, every single message on my Instagram, on my Twitter. Even though these messages weren't even bad and were from years before I even met Jay, Jay still thought that because of these messages, I was gonna cheat on him. Whoa, Alexia. Are you sure he wasn't checking just to see if you had Chucky's phone number for one of his classic calling Chucky at 3 a.m.? He uses a Ouija board gone wrong pranks. If I caught Jay going through my phone, that's what I would suspect first. That's all I'm saying. Seriously though, guys, that's some seriously messed up behavior. Little life pro tip, guys and girls. If you're ever in a relationship where your girlfriend or boyfriend trusts you so little that they want to go through your phone to make sure that you aren't DMing somebody else, you aren't sliding into like 
Pokimane's DMs or whatever, you should probably leave sooner rather than later because that kind of controlling behavior is usually a sign that your, you know, boyfriend slash girlfriend is missing a few marbles. And sometimes that can end up in some really serious and really, really, really bad scenarios. And I'm actually really glad that she got out of there because if Jay is okay with faking her death for views, who knows how far he'll actually go. Well, we do know at least that he went far enough to make her delete her social media accounts. Jay told me that he does not want me to have Instagram. He does not want me to have Facebook. He does not want me to have Snapchat. He wanted to completely erase all of my social media, but there was something that Jay told me from a couple days before that made me think a little differently. Um, it was that the past girlfriend that he had, she actually cheated on him. So I don't know if this is actually true or not. So unfortunately, I gave him a pass and I said, okay, well, I'll get rid of my social media and then after a month or two or whatever, he's going to end up trusting me more. After more time of being with him, I felt like he wanted to take away more and more and more away from me. At this point, I felt really controlled by him. So yeah, in my expert opinion, that is not a healthy relationship. And she doesn't seem to think so either, looking back at it. She goes on to talk about how she would do most of the editing for the channel that her and Jay shared, and how she felt like she was always running around trying to help Jay with his videos. It's clear that she felt that she was being used. Fast forward to the clip that you saw at the beginning of this video, and can you imagine coming home and hearing somebody say, yeah, we were thinking about faking his death, but honestly, now that you're here, I think it might just, you know, work better if it was you who died. That's something straight out of a horror movie. Like, could you imagine, like, a cult horror movie where the leader of the cult is determining who to sacrifice and at the last minute he turns and changes his mind and he goes we were thinking about you know sacrificing him but i think it might play out better if it was you that's definitely not a situation that you ever want to find yourself in but jay went on and actually made the videos and that brings us up to date with the video that i put out the other day but what we didn't know or at least we couldn't confirm at the time was that she was really uncomfortable with him making these videos she mentions that the audience for jay's channel is so young and that she felt like she probably shouldn't joke about death especially while her father is very sick she then says that she did actually help him make the videos so she's you know she was involved in making them but not because she wanted to she didn't but well honestly you probably won't believe me if i say it so listen to what she says I didn't Yeah, so from what she tells us, she was completely against the video going up, she did not want to mess with anyone's emotions, and she kept telling Jay that the videos were making her physically sick, which is exactly the type of response a normal human being would have when their boyfriend decides to fake their death against their wishes. You know, the whole scenario is so insane that I'm not sure what kind of response Jay could even make to this. It's very clear that she seems to be really hurt by these videos and what they were doing, and what they did to her friends and family, because she kept getting messages from people trying to see if she was alive, her family was also getting calls asking about her. Even her sick father was apparently getting calls asking whether or not her, his daughter was alive. And she says that she wasn't allowed to say anything to anyone. Now, she doesn't explicitly say it, but it says to me, it sounds like, at least to me, that she's trying to say that Jay wouldn't let her confirm that she was alive to, like, all of her worried friends and family, which, if true, is even more disgusting than the videos that he posted. If he forced her to fake her own death and then made her ignore everyone so that they thought she was actually dead, that is actually the worst thing I've ever heard. Imagine seeing from a YouTube video that your best friend or family member is dead, but not being able to find out any information about it anywhere else, there's no obituary, there's nothing. But when you try to contact her, it's radio silence. You would have to think that she's actually dead, because who would even joke about that kind of thing? That's a huge emotional strain to put on all of her friends and family, you know, seemingly against her wishes too. But she decided that she had enough, and she contacted some of her friends and family to tell them that she was alive. Her family demanded, rightfully in my opinion, that Jay take down the videos, or they would go to the news and tell everybody that she was okay, because the stress of the whole ordeal was getting to be too much for them, especially for her sick father. But when she told Jay that he needed to take down the videos, or her dad would go to the news, she says he responded in perhaps the most sickening and greedy way that I could ever imagine. So I went up to Jay and I said, Jay, my dad is telling me that he needs you to tell the world that I'm alive or he's going to go to the news himself and tell them. So then Jay ends up getting really mad, saying, tell your dad to not block my money. I don't get a part of his business. He shouldn't get a part of mine. At the end of that conversation, he said, why don't you tell your dad to write me an apology letter because he's trying to block my money. I almost don't believe he said that. If it was anybody but Jay Station, I probably wouldn't believe that he said that. And I really want to believe that literally nobody could act in such a greedy, selfish, insane manner. But it's Jay Station, and I've come to expect a certain, you know, level with him. 
To demand that somebody write you an apology because they were upset that you faked their own daughter's death, I honestly cannot imagine something less self-aware. And the way that she says he phrased it, that her dad shouldn't be messing with his money, that's such a greedy thing to say. When I hear that, do you know what I think he's really saying? I think that what he really meant was that his money is more important to him than she was, than her mental well-being was, than her father's health was. That's crazy. I honestly think that this saga might be the most vile and depraved thing that a YouTuber has ever done. I don't think that anyone will disagree with me on that front. Honestly, like, come on. And apparently Alexia agreed with me too, because she waited until he went to take a nap, told him she'd wake him up in a couple hours, and then she booked it, dude. She pulled the oldest trick in the book, the classic, oh yeah, honey, I'm going out for milk, and then they never come back for 12 years. The old stepfather routine, you know what I'm talking about. Honestly, probably the best move she could have made, because it did not sound like a healthy relationship, did not sound like a good scenario. If somebody's faking your death, you probably want to get out of there. I also want to point out that she didn't mention once any of the police action Jay claimed in his video. In fact, compared to Jay's video, this one's professional, well laid out, and Jay's is in my opinion, you know, just a little bit insane. I think he might have actually been still trying to milk even more cash from this scenario by lying that he was on the run for the police, which seems absolutely crazy. If we believe what Alexia had to say, is it really surprising that he would do that? I don't think so. Anyway guys, this is just too much Jay Station, so I'm done with it for now. And you should be too. We need to all stop giving him any attention, because the last thing I want to do is inadvertently keep his channel alive by drawing attention to it. That being said, do not go after or attack Jay for this, don't go after anybody in any of my videos. It's just not the right thing to do, and it's not worth it, you know? Let him fade away into obscurity, because that's the only way to keep him from coming back. So, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this whole scenario down below, tell me what you think. Do you think this is insane? Did you think anything would end up this crazy? Because I did not expect Alexia to drop such a fire video. Anyway guys, remember to like and subscribe, have a great day, God bless you.